And for more on this, we're now being joined by Dr. Madhavan Nair, former chairman of ISRO. Uh, Dr. Nair, thank you so much for being with us, sir. So, of course, must be a moment of uh, great enthusiasm and excitement for you as well as India gets ready to send the first Indians uh, into space on an Indian spacecraft. Um, what can you tell us? What are you picking up about this entire project? Uh, well, as you know, India started a space program much later compared to the developed countries. Uh, about 20 years later than USA or Europe I mean, and Russia. Uh, now we have uh, caught up with them in terms of the technologies. And of course, uh, our founding father, Dr. Vikram Sarabhai, has set the goal that uh, we have to master this uh, high technology and use it for improving the quality of life of the common man in the country. Yes, truly we have fulfilled his dreams in you know, early 2000. And then we were looking for what next? The gap areas where the planetary exploration and the space travel by the Indian astronauts. Uh, so these areas, uh, we tried to uh, work out a, a plan and that was projected as a, a development sequence for the 2020. And uh, in fact, that's the one which is carried through by the Indian Space Organization. And we are uh, in the phase of uh, implementing of course, as you know, as part of the planetary exploration, we have gone to moon, we have touched down on the moon, and all, not only that, one of our spacecraft has gone to Mars also. So that way we have uh, proven in that area, and the next gap area was uh, human space flight. Of course, it's quite a challenging one. Uh, only Russia, America, and China have got this capability. And uh, we were uh, uh, trying to get into this club as quickly as possible. Uh, the, you, the, the program was initiated way back in 2008, but somehow there was a lull period. But after the uh, Bodhiji has taken over, he is taking special interest in the space development. And as a result, the Human Space Initiative has been uh, cleared in, way back in uh, 2018. And since then, within a short time, within a five years itself, that uh, blueprint is uh, almost getting completed. As right. part of that, today, uh, the Prime Minister himself has uh, announced the names of the Gaganchari, the Indian astronauts uh, who have been picked up and trained in the Russian facilities and standing by, and the GSLA Mark III, which is to be used for taking this uh, module to the space is ready and it has successfully completed more than five missions. And uh, so soon there will be two test flights before we carry the humans in. So that means it's going to be a path-breaking moment for the Indian Space Program. Yes, of course, uh, Dr. Nair, and when you were in office there in 2008, that talk, of course, was already there about Indian human space flight. Now, obviously, there are lots of challenges in this, right, which go beyond what we've already done in the past. Now, we've been to Mars, we've gone to the moon, we've landed on the lunar south pole, but here in the Gaganyaan mission, along with that is also the human support systems, because the primary objective, of course, is to make sure that the astronauts can go safely into space and safely return. That's the priority. So how do you assess our capabilities in this field right now and all the work that has been done here for the last decade or two? Um, as you rightly observed, when we are carrying the human beings, our responsibility is much bigger. When we are carrying a spacecraft, we can afford to have some failures if at all it occurs. And uh, the track record of the uh, rocket systems, which is globally developed for various purposes, it stands with something like 10% failure rate. Of course, we were slightly better than that. Our PSLV and GSLV have demonstrated about 5% or better. But that is not sufficient. Even that risk we cannot take with human beings on board. So we have to improve the reliability of the launch system by an order of magnitude. This has been a biggest challenge before we saw. And they have been consistently working on this, how to include redundancies, how to include the fail safe mechanisms and how to identify the uh, danger points. And in case of uh, uh, mission failure, how to safely rescue the astronauts uh, from the rocket. And all these were aware before us. And ISO has uh, really uh, worked hard on it and already demonstrated the two crew escape system 
uh, in a couple of flights, and also the module which has to provide the life support system uh, has been uh, dummy has been formed, and uh, that way we have gaining experience. But the biggest challenge is to see that this uh, a, a habitat which is conducive for supporting the human life is created in the uh, outer space. So that is the biggest challenge. There is a zero gravity. There is a lot of radiation from uh, various uh, stars and uh, sun and so on. And all this has to be protected. And then, of course, the, the management of the food and the waste and uh, even condition the human beings for those conditions. So these are the real big challenges. So I just wanted to understand, are we going to have to reinvent this entire technology from the beginning, or is there some of this technology that we can acquire from countries like Russia or America who've, who've already done this in the past and done it successfully? Well, uh, in this field of uh, rocket technology, especially the human space flight, etc., the technology is available in the market is zero. No country will part with the technology which they have developed and uh, for our money. So that way, it is a really uh, tough job for the Indian space community to really uh, start from the scratch and develop everything, prove and demonstrate before we can carry the astronauts into the orbit. So Dr. Nair, what we are hearing is that there's going to be a test of the rocket system and the basic systems in 24 and 25 perhaps, and then Perhaps one year, one and a half years from now is when you will actually have Indian astronauts going into, into space, into a low Earth orbit in an Indian uh, rocket. Is that roughly the timeline that you're picking up also? Uh, yes, certainly. As I mentioned earlier, the rocket system has to be reliable and uh, that efforts have been continuously going on. And the GSLV Mark III has benefited out of it. As you know, the GSLV Mark III, all the flights have been successful so far. And uh, it has demonstrated its reliability to a great extent. Um, again, uh, to monitor the flight performance in real time and take decisions whether to proceed with the flight or not is a big challenge. Again, the uh, crew escape module, uh, which uh, is again uh, mounted above the module, uh, a rocket system, which will uh, be almost like the uh, the jettisoning system in the fighter aircraft uh, when the pilot has to abort the flight. So that kind of system has been awarded and demonstrated. And uh, up to the, the, the uh, module which can carry three humans uh, at a time, uh, three astronauts at a time, uh, it has been developed and uh, it is undergoing various tests before it can be cleared. Of course, the proof of the pudding is the eating. We have to mount this module on board the GSME and make the flight uh, as it happens with astronauts. And that is the unmanned flight which is scheduled for this year and next year. Two flights minimum has to be there by which we can demonstrate the entire system, not only taking them to orbit, keeping them in orbit in a uh, safe condition, and then returning absolutely safely to the ground and recovering is a big challenge. All right, uh, Dr. Nair, one last question. Now, once this has been tested in low Earth orbit and the systems are therefore working fine, does it become much easier to plan more ambitious manned missions uh, going, going ahead, you know, space station, going to the moon perhaps, maybe beyond that, who knows, Mars at some point. Does all of that become easier once the basic technology has been developed? Uh, certainly, I think this, uh, once we develop this technology, it is going to be a stepping stone for sending our... Uh, uh, human uh, exploration to Mars or Moon and so on. But there's again a big leap forward. Uh, we have to have much more powerful rockets for that purpose, and we have to have life support system which can sustain for months together if you want to go to Mars and so on. Uh, I'm, I was really happy that uh, Prime Minister himself has taken initiative, and recently in Trivandrum, he has announced that we will have our own space station as a next step. Uh, somewhere about 2030 and by about 2035, we will have our astronauts flying to moon in our own rocket system. So there is a big challenge posed to the space community in the country and that will give a big boost to the space uh, technology in the country and we will be uh, in par with the leaders in the space club. Dr. Madhavan Nair, former chairperson of ISRO, thank you so much for being with us.